Hey YouTubers, I'm Jonah. And today we're going to learn some component part names and functions of a furnace. And this video is dedicated to many of us that just want to know the basic parts of our furnace and its functions. So this is my furnace, Ultra SX90 Armstrong. 90 means 90% efficiency. There's also an Ultra 80 which means 80% efficiency. So first of all, know your furnace on and off power switch. Mark your furnace on and off. This will eliminate any confusion by family members or people working on it. My switch is approximately four to five feet away from my furnace. Not sure why, probably just the way the electrician set it up. Your furnace may be close by, right around this area here, where it would be easily visible and accessible. So high efficient furnaces will have black or white ABS or PVC plastic exhaust pipes. Just like this one. The older ones will have the steel metal exhaust pipes. So let's open up and take a look. The first thing you see is this rectangular box, which is our combustion chamber and holds our three burners. This is where the gas is released and meets the igniter and creates the flames. The old furnaces have pilot lights. The newer ones have flame igniters. When it starts to glow super red hot, it can reach a temperature of 1800 Fahrenheit. So what's interesting to know is that my furnace has an igniter and flame rod combo. And underneath the burner are the wires. Notice the two blue wires and the black wire. The two blue wires connect to the igniter and the black wire connects to the flame rod sensor. And notice the end is just similar to plug and play. Notice the flame rod is the one with a black wire. And many HVAC suggest to clean the rod once a year. Mainly because carbon builds up on the rod, and therefore giving you faulty switch. And the function of the flame rod is to make sure there's flames coming from the burner. Its safety features is that if it doesn't sense the flame, it will shut off. And the furnace will not work therefore shutting off the gas so the gas will not escape. Notice the super red hot igniter meets with gas and combustion occurs creating the flames and therefore creates the heat for your house. Then the blower pushes air through the heat exchanger and distributes the warm air throughout your house, keeping you nice and warm for the winter. Notice the three burners kick in. So this steel pipe is called the manifold and it brings gas into the burner or combustion chamber. And this is our combination gas valve and it's designed to stop and start the flow of gas into our combustion chamber. This is our gas pipe that leads into our shutoff valve. Always shut off the gas when working on your furnace. And when turning off the gas, turn it to horizontal position like so or 90 degrees to the gas pipe. And when turning it back on, put it to its original position. Or 180 degrees to the gas pipe. And this is our vent tube pipe. 
This is black ABS piping. Most newer ones will be white PVC pipe, since the white PVC pipe can withstand the heat better than ABS. And the flue gases are exhausted through this pipe outdoors. This is our vent motor, also called induced draft motor, also called your vent fan motor. It's designed to force air to remove excess flue gases and exhaust it outdoors. This is connected to the vent tube. This was also the part I replaced a few weeks back because my vent motor seized. So before my vent motor finally seized, it was making a loud jet noise sounded like an airplane landing on my house. <laughs> you can check out my last video, how to replace your vent motor. And this is my condensate drain hose. So the condensation of water drips through this tube and into the condensate drain. And if we follow the condensate tube, it leaves the furnace and into the back. and drains into my floor drain. So this is my pressure switch. My furnace only has one, but other furnaces may have two pressure switches. So the furnace will not operate when there's unsafe conditions. Its function is to prevent the furnace from running unless the correct venting pressure is present and I have two pressure switch hoses. The orange one that you just saw and this clear one that's connected to my inducer vent fan motor. And this is our control board or motherboard. It's the electronic brains that tell the furnace what to do. These wires, red, white, black, and green, connect to your thermostat. And behind the motherboard is the fan blower. And like I said before, the blower is designed to push the air through the heat exchanger, and the warm air is distributed throughout the house. And on the right side is the blower motor. And here it is right here. And just above the motor is our capacitor. Be careful when removing the capacitor. It holds an electrical charge. Function of our capacitor, it stores and discharges energy and provides a steady supply of electricity to the fan motor. Therefore, it's used to help the blower move hot air through your system. And on the left side, Inside is our blower wheel or squirrel cage used to blow the air. So if you hear loud rattling noise, the problem is most likely the blower and motor. And notice to the right, you'll see our furnace filter. Next is our furnace door switch. When the switch is pressed, the power is on on the furnace. And when you let go, the power turns off. Just a safety feature when the door panels are out. And just outside to the right is the slot for the furnace filter. Many furnace filters come in different sizes. Mine is 16 by 25 inches. And I usually replace them every three months. Therefore, that's just the basic 101 parts and functions of my Ultra 90 Armstrong furnace. And hopefully this video has helped you out. And if you liked my video and found it interesting, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, comment and subscribe. Also hit that notification bell so you always get my latest video. Thanks for watching.